So today is November 14th, 2012. We're on the final day of the Brewster Dig, and this is Craig Chartier, the project archaeologist from the Plymouth Archaeological Recovery Project. So Craig, I have a question for you. Uh, on the Brewster Dig, we have other videos about a lot of the um, components of this dig, but I'd like to ask you a question in particular. Have you been finding in your work that um, pilgrim sites are also Native American sites. Oh, definitely. Yeah, the sites are right on top of each other. You know, basically, when the uh, the Native Americans were living here, it was uh, such a small population that they could pick the best sites that they wanted to. You know, they'd pick the prime locations. But it just makes sense. I mean, if you you want to have a location that's high and dry, um, near fresh water, uh, and it's the same kind of location that the pilgrims sub subsequently would uh, pick as well, because they were moving into an area that you know that had been. Uh, depopulated by disease, and so as a result, they were doing the same sort of things that Native Americans would have with the small populations, and they were able to select the, the best sites that they wanted to. And so naturally, they ended up picking the same sites that, that the Native Americans had picked before. Um, part of it was probably because uh, a lot of the land had been cleared as well by the Native Americans for planting fields, you know, prior to prior to the Pilgrims landing. And so, you know, they want to pick a site that's uh, close to fresh water, that's been cleared already, that's uh, on a nice little knoll. Um, which is exactly the same thing that the Native Americans would want to do as well. And what have you found here um, in terms of Native American on the Elder William Brewster site? Uh, we found uh, three projectile points, at least three projectile points that I've seen so far. Uh, two of them were small triangles, which are either late archaic or late woodland. They, they, uh, <clears throat> they kind of have a curve shape to it, so it's probably more like late archaic. Uh, we also found a small stem point, which is late archaic, you know, between about three to 6,000 years old, and a uh, nice gouge made out of uh, hornfells from up around um, Boston area. And that dates to about the same time, too, the late archaic period. Archaic period. Uh, but that one had been reused by somebody in the 18th century as part of the foundation. They probably stuck it in as a shimming stone or chinking stone amongst the other stones. So it could have been something they found out in the field or uh, something they happened to come across when they were you know, establishing the, the site here. And what would a gouge be used for? Uh, it was used to uh, help clear away the charcoal when you're burning down trees or when you're burning out logs to make machines, to make canoes, basically. Uh, you'd burn it, and then you'd use the, the gouge to basically chip away chip away that charcoal and get it out of the way. Uh, you can also use it for taking off small branches from trees and that sort of thing. Have you found that uh, this bay, Duxbury, Kingston, and Plymouth Bay, is a uh, prolific Native American site? Oh, definitely, yeah. All around the, all around the bay, there's tons of sites, must be hundreds of sites, um, dating from at, at least the Middle Archaic right up into the, uh, the late, Arch late Woodland period, the Contact period. Yeah, there was uh, tons of places for people to live. There's lots of estuaries, lots of fresh water, uh, lots of places to get food, you know, good planting lands. So there would have been uh, lots and lots of uh, people living all around here. Well, thank you, and um, we will talk soon. You're welcome.